Welcome to Chocolate Fest 2021. Coming to you this year from the staff at Redland Community Library in our homes. I am Karen Hostetter, Library Manager. Usually, our library is filled with the taste and smells of all things chocolate in February. Neighbors and visitors usually sit and chat while enjoying the treats that we all bring to share. Children surround Miss Nancy to make a special Valentine craft. Well, this year, we're going to recreate Chocolate Fest as best we can, and we need your help to do it. Nancy, Carrie, Yai, and I have each created a special recipe that we're sharing here hoping that you'll be inspired to do the same. And please put your photos or videos on our library Facebook page. Three entries will be drawn to win a $25 gift card to Carnes. Okay, enjoy. Hi, I'm Carrie and I'm one of your friendly neighborhood librarians. And one of my favorite events, one of our favorite events, is Chocolate Fest, which usually happens in February. So, we wanted to share with you one of our favorite chocolate recipes. Um, it is not my own, and because I am a busy, working mom, um, I'm just gonna make box brownies with my two children, Lucy and Logan. Um, and so, we're gonna start, uh, we already preheated the oven. Lucy's gonna add the brownie mix to the bowl, yep. Yeah. Logan is gonna spray the glass dish. Can you throw that away down there? Yeah. That's a good load. All right. And so um, I do like to have things pre-measured for them uh, when we're cooking together or baking together. Um, it just makes things a little easier and a little less messy. So Logan's going to add the water and Lucy's going to add the oil while I get an egg. Right in the bowl. Alright, and then Logan has volunteered to do the egg for us. Thank you. Alright, and so Lucy's going to start mixing. Whoops. And we will bake that for the time on the uh, box. And then we will be finished with a delicious dessert, chocolate brownies. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, this is Miss Yai with the Redland Library. And I am going to show you a really quick craft that you can do with um, Hershey's Kiss for all the little chocolate lovers out there. Okay, so it's actually turning this kiss into these little cute critters. 
have the little cute craft for uh, your little one and uh, Valentine's and their friends. And here's what you're going to do. Of course, you're going to need a Hershey Kiss. You're going to need two craft hearts and little mini googly eyes. So, and an adhesive, of course. Um, you can use any adhesive, but the glue stick does take a little longer for it to dry. Um, so I'm going to use one of my favorite crafting glues here. So what you're going to need is first you take your two hearts and you're going to glue them like this. Just enough at the base of the tip and because of how much glue I'm going to be needing, I'm actually going to take a, um, a uh, toothpick and just get dabs of the glue so I'm not pouring too much because that particular glue tends to kind of come out a little depending on how you opened it. So I'm going to dab it on this end here and I'm going to take the other heart and attach it like that so it ends up looking like that. Then I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. I'm going to take my Hershey Kiss and my two googly eyes and I'm going to add Get a dab on each eye and attach it onto my kiss. Get my second eye. And attach that next to the other eye. And then I am going to then dab more glue onto the glued hearts. It'll get a little messy, but crafting is fun, so it's okay if it gets a little messy. And now that I have the glue on there, I then take my Hershey Kiss and I attach it to my two hearts. And there you have it. Your very own little Hershey Kiss critter with little wings. Thanks for watching. Enjoy making this fun craft. Hey friends, it's my turn now. I'm Miss Nancy, in case you don't know me, from the Redlands Community Library. And today I'm going to be, be, be baking chocolate chip orange scones and it's a recipe in the big book of breakfast and that is written by Mariana Volstadt and chocolate should be included in every meal so that's why I chose this one okay so I've already put my dry ingredients together and that is two cups of flour a quarter cup sugar one tablespoon baking powder and a half a teaspoon salt now this is what I consider to be the trickiest part of the whole process. I've cut up six tablespoons of butter into little pieces. I'm going to add it to the dry ingredients. Now I don't have a pastry cutter, which is the, the tool that I guess real, real bakers would use. So I'm going to mix it up using two knives. And it's just going to, going to go like this and hopefully the butter will get mixed into all the dry ingredients and a dough will form, a nice buttery dough. So as you can see, it's not a perfect way of doing things, but you know, necessity is the mother of invention. When you don't have a pastry cutter, you do what you can. All right, so this seems to be taking a long time. And we'll... Okay, so it took a while, but I think I finally have a good crumb mixture here. I cut up the butter into little pieces, and now I am to put the chocolate chips in. So that's an easy part. I'll put them in, and I'll just give them a stir. Get them all covered in flour so that they don't stick together. Okay, so now I'm going to put that aside and I'll work on the, the wet ingredients. I have a bowl. I'm going to whisk the egg. I've got an egg here. Okay, whisk the egg. 
This is half and half. How much is a half and half? It's a half a cup of half and half. And I have a tablespoon of orange zest. And the orange zest smells so good. It's going to be delicious in the scone. So let me put that in. I'm going to get my whisk and break up the yolk and do some stirring of the half and half, the egg and the orange zest. Okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm gonna put that in with my dry ingredients and stir it all up with a fork. So let me get all that orange zest in there and I'll use my spatula for that. Put that aside. Now I'm going to get everything wet. It's coming together nicely. Okay. Like I said, the trickiest part was just cutting up the butter into the flour. And maybe if I had a pastry cutter, that would have been easier, but you know, we're managing. They're gonna taste delicious no matter what. Now, usually when I'm cooking, I don't have all these little bowls filled with ingredients. I just usually measure out things right from the container. I'm sure you probably do too. But I've watched so many cooking shows that they always seem to have everything ready. So I said, well, I have these little glass bowls. I can do that too. So let's get this all. Looks a little dry to me, but let's see. So the next part, we're going to get a rolling pin out, I'll move my ingredients over, I'm going to add some flour. I have this silicone mat to make circles, it's really for pies, but I figure I can use that today. And my rolling pin. I'll put some flour on the mat and some flour on the rolling pin. So my, hopefully my batter doesn't stick to it. Of course, I washed my hands before I started cooking. So, let me move this out of the way. to my hands. It's not sticking to each other so much though. Oh, I don't even need a, a rolling pin. So let's see. We can make this as close to a circle as possible. Now they say to cut it with a sharp knife. So I was going to use my pizza cutter. So now I'm 
going to put it on the baking sheet and it's going to cook for 12 minutes. Okay, so we'll check back in 12 minutes. Okay, my 12 minute timer just went off, so let's see what they look like, okay? They smell delicious. And, oh, here they are. Let me bring them over. Oh, they look pretty good too, don't they? Um, they're too hot to eat right now, so once they cool off a bit, I'll probably make myself a cup of tea and have a scone, a chocolate chip orange scone. And that was again from the Big Book of Breakfast. And there are many, many, many other cookbooks in your county library. So you don't have to just stick to this one. You can stick to any one you want. There's lots of different recipes and fun things to do. But thank you for joining me today. And you know what I'm doing next. I'm going to be eating. Bye. Hi there, I am making silken tofu chocolate pie. Now, before you turn your nose up at it, tofu is a wonderful ingredient that has no flavor of its own. It actually absorbs the flavor of whatever you're making. This is a very, very easy recipe. It has exactly three ingredients. A bag of chocolate chips, a pack of silken tofu, and two tablespoons of honey. I also added a half a cup of Nutella just because I like Nutella. And if you're making it as a pie, then you'll add a pie crust of your choice. I am making it as a little candy treat tonight. And what I did was I took tiny cupcake papers and I lined them with uh, chocolate. So I melted a pack of chocolate uh, so this is an additional pack of chocolate chips. Melted them and then literally just painted them inside my little paper cups. And uh, you just paint the bottom and the sides. Put that in the freezer to set while you're making your ingredients. And um, very easily you have a mixer. You're going to open your tofu, put it on a paper towel, it just absorbs the extra moisture and then put it into your mixer or your blender or food processor, whatever it is you want to use. Add your honey and then uh, go ahead and mix that till it's nice and smooth and creamy. In the meantime, you're going to take your pack of chocolate chips, put it into the microwave and I used uh, one minute and 30 seconds and then took it out and stirred it and then put it in for another 30 seconds. And then you're just going to take your chocolate chips, uh, your melted chocolate chips, and put them into your mix as well and blend it till it's just wonderfully smooth and creamy. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time for that. I don't know. I think I was on pulse, so I don't know actually how long it took. Um, but anyway, you take your, um, your chocolate that you set and then put in the freezer uh, take them out and um, just use little um, rounded tablespoonfuls to fill your cups with the chocolate mixture and it is delightful. Um, I only made 30 and so I had um, all this left over, this wonderful, uh, looks like a chocolate mousse dessert. Um, I could have probably filled 48 little cups and that means probably 24 if you were going to use a regular size baking cup. Or, of course, one silken chocolate tofu pie. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye.